Well, as you can see, it's a new update. It's been a long, long time since I've done an update, and a lot of stuff has changed. Uh, what you see in front of you is one of my latest prints. It did not come off of my rep wrap, unfortunately. Uh, I felt like I needed a more reliable machine, and uh, I went with a different direction just so I can get these parts pumped out and uh, have a little bit of fun. And I think anytime you have a 3D printer, it's always a good idea to have a second 3D printer on hand to help you improve your main one. All right, so what you're looking at is the Tornado that is featured on Thingiverse. It's at half scale, which is uh, half size of what it should be, and it took about three hours to make. I made it at Maker Place, which is a new hobby workshop here in San Diego. I'm a member now, so uh, I should demo the machine that I'm currently using over there, and this is the machine. This is the uh, Maker Gear Mosaic. It is smaller than the rep wrap that I was currently using, and but it's pretty high quality stuff coming off here. It's pretty quiet. It's got a five by five build plate, five inch cube build plate, uh, some extra cooling fans, that excellent Maker Gear hot end. It prints very very low layers. Right th right now this is currently printing at 0 0.25 millimeter layer height, which is uh, was impossibly low for my other machine to even try to print at. So it's printing pretty well. And I can print down to 0 0.015 millimeters. It's running the ramps. And I, I actually printed up an extra fan clip and I featured that I put that on Thing Thingiverse as well. So it keeps my ramps nice and cool. To the workbench area you can see I've made some changes. Uh, I have it all cluttered right now but I got the mosaic down here and then I have the filament spool up there I actually created a little uh, A-frame for it, and I used some old belts and zip ties to create that, and bar clamps from old Prusas. Right now I'm still working with a blue PLA. It's a 1.75 millimeter because that's the size that, of that nozzle. You know, I have it elevated like this because I was having problems with skipping and um, unreliable layer height. So I did this, and until recently it was working very well. As I started getting towards the end of that filament, it's almost depleted right there. Uh, I had this happen. You can see that the uh, it split. This was supposed to be a, a plate of three different parts. And these parts are to a uh, Rep Rap Pro Huxley. It's a version of the Huxley that's made by Adrian Boyer. And uh, I don't know, it just split in half for some reason. Really good layers. And then it just uh, went crazy. I think it skipped a Z step, unfortunately. Something weird happened. I think it had something to do with the torque that was being pulled on by the filament spool. So when I woke up this morning, I had these problems. So I took care of it. And I, I just put a little bit more tension on there, actually, because I had a really loose. And as it becomes smaller, the diameter of the fil filament of the actual roll, it actually will uh, curl off really crazy like a phone, like a telephone cord, if you remember what those are. And it will put some weird forces on the extruder nozzle. So I think I've solved that. I've got the LEDs up here. You might recognize these from the rep wrap I was rocking before. And I still have that rep wrap. It's in rebuilding phase. But I just zip tied those up there. And I made a little jerry-rigged uh, shelf. Not a, not a lot of weight bearing, but get some stuff off the, off the desk. All right, the uh, 3D printer is still over there. It's actually in work, and uh, I'm printing up some new parts for it to make it really good. Uh, I don't really have a lot of time. I'm trying to bust out all these Huxley parts for my Kickstarter backers, and I've been working a lot of hours. If you know if you know me at all, uh, some of you have already met me in person. Uh, you know that I've been working a lot of hours and I barely have time to do my machine, work with my machine and get out to Maker Place and uh, show off this machine just so I can get some interest going so that uh, there's some people still here doing that when I have to go overseas for, the, for uh, my job. So actually I am teaching a class on how to build this at Maker Place. So if you're in the San Diego area and you'd like to build this version of this machine, uh, we're offering, they're offering the class there. It's going to be $969 for the entire class. And that includes at least, at the most, 16 hours of 
personal instruction from me, and I'll help you get it up and running. It's a really easy machine. If you can hold a screwdriver, you can build this machine. And I know there might be some cheaper options out there or some uh, more open source options out there, but I feel like this is a good mid-grade machine to come in on. It's very reliable. There's very few problems that, ha ha that pop up with it. There's no soldering. There's no guesstimating on steps or anything like that. Maker Gear did all the work. And uh, it's a really good machine, and I've been really enjoying it. And it's actually helped me get through all my parts. Uh, I, last time you saw me, I was probably in the middle of printing up more Prusa kits. I had just finished the 250 level, and I'm working my way back down to the uh, to the, the knickknacks such as the, the tornado and things like that. Down there you can see I have six kits ready to go. Uh, sorry for the crazy orientation, but I have six Prusa kits ready to go. Is that one, two, three, four, five? I have five of them there and then one more on my uh, template builder that I have over there. And I actually have some extra parts. I actually have some extra Prusa kits that left over. I just lost track of how many I was printing. So I printed too many. Uh, with that being said, I'm considering holding some type of contest or giveaway to get rid of some of my extra plastic printed parts so that I can uh, clear out. I want to clear my, my work table and uh, have some extra space. And it's always good to have some more makers out there working with uh, 3D printers. So if you have any ideas on how I can hold a contest on how to Give away these 3D printer kits, no hardware included, just the plastic parts. I'd really uh, be interested in hearing from you. Uh, I would really like to get the view counts up on my on my uh, videos. You guys are doing a great job. I love all the uh, all the views you give me and the likes. Uh, if you could share it, that'd be great. Uh, any profits that come from YouTube go back into the hobby. They go back into building more 3D printer kits, and the more I can make, uh, the more I can give away, and the better my videos do on YouTube, the more uh, freebies I might be getting, and then I can give those away, away as well. I have no use for most of the stuff that people want to give me, such as plastics, and uh, I mean, I prefer my, my supplier, so I'll just stick to them, but if people want to donate plastics to me for me to review, I'll uh, review it and then just give it away to somebody else. And same thing for hardware. Uh, I'm actually considering on putting on one of the pa the panel max. It's a self-controlled panel that would actually attach to the ramps, and you can actually control the machine completely independent of a of a computer. And it's all it's got LCD, and it's got a clicker encoder, and a reset button for emergency stop. And I'm considering put that on the mosaic. It's just there isn't a, an adapter built for the mosaic yet, so I'm looking into that. Uh, so that might be really cool. I won't have to take my computer with me whenever I go do 3D printing demos. So I'm looking into that. So if you're in the San Diego area again, please look me up. I'm really easy to get a hold of. Uh, it's Mr. John Ecker uh, at gmail.com or at Mr. John Ecker on Twitter. You can always contact me through YouTube. That's not preferred, but I will get back to you eventually. So nice talking to you guys. Please uh, like, favorite, share this video. And uh, keep those views coming and keep me uh, working on these machines, all right? Talk to you later.